Is the all-important doctrine known as the Trinity? Is this found in the Bible or pagan religion? Let's find out. Hey, this is Pastor Randy. I'd like to welcome you to another Drive-By Teaching. It's a blessing to have you with me today. Where today I want to focus on a very important doctrine according to Christianity, and that is the Trinity. What if I told you that the Trinity is not based on Scripture? Matter of fact, the word Trinity does not even occur in Scripture. Nowhere is it to be found. Matter of fact, if you look at history, what we find is this. The Trinity, the concept of a Trinity, is not something we find in the New Testament. This is something that developed over hundreds of years, by the way. Matter of fact, the Trinity within Christianity was not even developed until 300 years after the Messiah came and died for our sins. So that's a really important fact for you to remember is that the theology of the Trinity was not developed until 300 years. But here's the reality of the Trinity, it, and, and that is it is based on pagan ideas and concepts. And I want to share with you a few references today. The first one is from the Old Truths in a New Light. This was a publication uh, published in 1876, and it's page 382 in this publication. And here's what it says. It, it, it goes on to explain, it says, it is generally, although erroneously supposed, that the doctrine of the Trinity is a Christian origin. Nearly every nation of antiquity possessed a similar doctrine. So we find here that it says almost every religion in the ancient world had a belief similar to what we find within Christianity involving the Trinity. And by the way, I'm reading these uh, references from our booklet. It's the Identifying the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A very, very good reference, a very, very good booklet if you're interested in the relationship between the Father and Son and how all that works within Scripture. I want to read another source. This is from The Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop, a really great read. And here's what he says. It says, Will anyone after this say that the Roman Catholic Church must still be called Christian because it holds the doctrine of the Trinity? So is this something that we find only in Christianity? Or what does he say? He says, So did the pagan Babylonians, so did the Egyptians, so did the Hindus at this hour, in the very sense in which Rome does. So we find here that just as the Roman Church understand the Trinity, the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the triune relationship there, that we see the same thing in Hinduism, we see the same thing in Babylonian religion, we see the same thing in Egyptian religion, and so many other cultures throughout antiquity. I want to continue on our uh, search, and the next reference is from the Encyclopedia of Religion and Ethics. And here's what it says about the Trinity. It says, Although the notion of a tr divine triad or trinity is characteristic of the Christian religion, it is by no means peculiar to it. In Indian religion, we meet the Trinitarian group of Brahma, Shiva, and Vishnu. And in Egyptian religion, with the Trinitarian group of Osiris, Isis, and uh, Horus, constituting a divine family like the father, mother, and son, a medieval Christian picture. So, Again, we see an example here, a specific example, two, one from Hinduism and one from the ancient Egyptian religion, both showing this triune relationship long before, long before Christianity ever adopted the Trinity. So again, this concept is not something we find in the New Testament. This is not something that the Messiah taught. This is not something the apostles taught. This is something that the church brought in based on pagan ideas, based on really Greek influence, Hellenistic influence in the early church. I want to continue reading here. This next reference is from the LaRousse Encyclopedia of Mythology, and it speaks about the ancient uh, empire of Sumer, the, the early, one of the earliest empires, if not the earliest, known to mankind. And here's what it says about the religion of Sumer. It says here, the universe was divided into three regions, each of which became the domain of a god. It says, uh, Enu's share was the sky, the earth was given to Unu, Ea, became the ruler of the waters. Together, they constituted the triad of the great gods, and that is on page 54 and 55 of this reference. So again, we see here, not only do we see this in the Egyptian religion, not only do we see this with the Babylonians, not only do we see this with the Hindus, but we also see it within the ancient empire of Sumer. This, again, is not a new concept. This is not something that the church came up by reading the New Testament. Where they came up with this is, through Greek and Hellenistic influence. I want to read one more reference. This is from the, the uh, Story of Civilization, Volume 3. Here's what it says about this concept, again known as the Trinity. 
Christianity did not destroy paganism, it adopted it. I want to stop there for just a moment. That is such an amazing statement. Think about that. Think about what this author is saying, this, this reference is acknowledging here. It is saying here that Christianity did not remove paganism within the church, it adopted it. And we see this with so many facets of Christianity, you know, whether it's Easter, whether it's Christmas, whether it's Lent, or many, many other facets within Christianity. They have adopted the, these, these pagan ideas. Now, listen, I'm not saying all Christians are pagans, so I, don't, I, I, I want you to understand that. But so much of the church's theology is based on pagan ideas, which they developed very early on within the church, and we see that here. Or it goes on to say this, the Greek language having reigned for centuries over philosophy became the vehicle of Christian literature and ritual. This uh, Greek literature, this basically is these, these Hellenistic ideas that the church have brought in. It says the uh, Greek mysteries passed down into the impressive mystery of the mass. Other pagan cultures contributed to the syncretist result. Syncretist or syncretism is the blending of different religions. And we see this all throughout, again, the theology within Christianity. The Trinity is just one example of many. Again, Easter and Christmas, very popular with believers, Bible believers, and yet we know these days were barred from pagan worship. It goes on to say, from Egypt came the ideas of a, div a divine trinity. So here it acknowledges that the concept of trinity as found in Christianity did not, again, develop from the New Testament, did not develop from something the Messiah said or the apostles taught. It was borrowed from the pagan religion of the old Egyptians. And again, this back goes back even further, I believe, to the uh, nation of Sumer. You know, as believers, it is so important that we worship our Father in heaven and in spirit and truth. You know, that's a directive we find from our Savior himself. He said that we were to worship the Father in spirit and truth. And that means that our worship should be rooted within the truth and the word of our Father in heaven. If something we're, we believe is not rooted in, 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 in the word, and even more so is rooted in pagan worship, listen, here's what we're to do as believers. It's real simple. We're to remove it. We're to stop doing it. This, again, even includes things like Sunday worship. These things are not found in the Bible. They are not something that the Messiah taught. These were beliefs that were brought in by the church, in some cases, like the Trinity, 300 years after the fact. So it's so important that we worship our Father in heaven in spirit and truth as we find from our Savior. Well, I pray that this drive-by teaching has been a blessing to you. And you know, I would encourage you to join me for every, every program that's so important. We bring you important truths, important teachings. You're, you're probably not going to find very many other places. So we would encourage you to follow us and, and, and like us, by the way, and uh, just continue watching these programs. You're going to learn so much. I thank you for watching today, and may Yahweh bless you. This has been Drive-By Teaching with Pastor Randy. Join the conversation and leave us a like and comment below. Subscribe now for all our latest releases. For one of the most extensive religious websites ever, YRM.org. For all the ways to connect with us, see the description below. From all of us here at Drive-By Teaching, don't get stuck in the slow lane of tradition. Put the brakes on ignorance and put your understanding into overdrive.